today we're going to be talking about bullying and in particular online bullying and I'm very very lucky to have with me today two fantastic guests who are going to be talking about the huge impact that this has. We know that half of people 25 and under experience bullying and also 15% of people actually admit to cyber bullying. So with no further ado, let me introduce John Lancaster, who's a disability uh, and body confidence educator and campaigner. Now, Jono started his own charity, Love Me, Love My Face, and he travels all around the world supporting and educating children about disability. So welcome, thank you. Thank you for having me, Sally. Yeah, it's... pleasure, pleasure yeah. is all ours. And I'm also very happy to have here in the studio with me today, Bobby Norris, who made his name on TOWIE. It was nearly 10 years, wasn't it? You've been on TOWIE. I think almost 11. Wow. Now. I don't know wow. where, where the time's gone flies by, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> and probably more importantly for the purposes of today's conversation, Bobby has been really instrumental in introducing the um, online safety bill because it was Bobby who pushed for the e-petition on holding trolling trollers to account for their online abuse. So we're in very good company today. Thank you both of you. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Um, perhaps Bobby, would you start us off by telling us a little bit about what you've been working on and maybe where we're at with the online safety bill? Yeah, absolutely. So I started the bill about four years ago mm -hmm. now. Um, so I wasn't sure. I'd kind of gone through this stage of, of not really talking ab about getting the ho the horrendous trolling on social media. Um, and I think in a way I was almost embarrassed, which I don't know why I'd kind of put that on me yeah. because it's it's always about the person that's sending the messages. Um, but I kind of thought, you know, with my, my profile and my voice, I, I wanted to speak out because I was so aware that I wouldn't be the only person. And it wasn't until speaking about it on TOWIE and, and then spitting the media on the radio and on TV that so many people got in touch. And I think some people still don't realise it's not just celebrities and people in the public eye that receive the vileness of trolls on social media. And um, it, it, it's awful, the statistics of, of the amount of people that do. And for me, yeah, I just like to use my voice and my profile to, to make change because I've had so many messages from people and awful, awful stories I've heard from parents that have lost children that have took yes. their own lives because of it yeah. uh, and people's partners who have took their own lives because of it. And if we can save just one life yeah. from making, making it stricter and, and making a law about it, I, I think it's worth doing. It's long overdue, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. No, it's fantastic that you've been given, been giving lawmakers a, a push in the right direction. Yeah, and I don't think we're far off now. So that's fantastic. amazingly from my my last debate, which I say I think was about six weeks ago. I think something will be yes. coming soon. Um, it's nearly it's nearly through the house. It's of nearly Commons, through, isn't it? it, so and it's, it's been a long yeah. a long ride. But um, I mean, I've never tried to make a law before. I didn't know what all the different stages. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, it's I, got one more reading in the House of Commons, yeah, hasn't it? Great. And then it goes to the House of Lords, and then it's the final amendment. So it's on track, and yeah. it, and it's fantastic. Fingers development. crossed. And, yeah. yeah, it's uh, not a day too soon. Yeah, no, it's absolutely brilliant. And Jono, would you like to tell us? about what you've been with. I know you've had lots of projects going on, but what would you like to tell us about in particular? Um, first of all, just hearing you speak so passionately about that, Bobby, is, is really, really encouraging. Um, throughout social media's existence, I've experienced trolling, bullying. Um, I now run my own charity, the Love Me, Love My Face Foundation. Um, so I have a condition called Treach Collins, which has affected my appearance. And um, so we support children all over the UK. And we have so many families that reach out to us that share that their son, their daughter has been filmed and then it's been put on TikTok. It's been shared on Twitter and they've been created, the memes have been created by them. Um, they're they're self-harming because of this bullying um it's hugely important like as you know 
uh, that's needed to be done. Um, I'm currently having conversations with with TikTok, um, along with a lot of other um, cranial facial face acceptance charities, because we're experiencing a lot of memes and fake stories that uh, and videos being created about all of us and they're there on every social media platform and everybody every time we try and report them we get that it doesn't violate any terms and conditions or any guidelines so we're now in in regular contact with TikTok trying to educate them on how to police it how to manage in it but Bobby you are 100% correct that social media is such it's such a new thing and there was there is no social media for dummies there's nothing like that created so we're all trying to having to to learn and adapt on his feet um but that's something that i'm working on and we actually have we have a, an annual retreat so for somebody with treach collins they may have never ever met somebody like them themselves before so what we do as a charity we invite all our families in the uk to come and hang out and then for the first time in their life they have the opportunity to say hey he's like me she's like me they've got the same ears as myself uh, they oh my god they wear a hearing aid and without having to actually express any words somebody just sees that person and i get it mm -hmm. i get it uh, there's so a it's lot good, more yeah. work to be done isn't yes, there it is it's a minefield but conversations and um big stuff is happening which is which is great to really see and, that, and that's why yeah and that's why we're here now you've both very kindly agreed to read out some of the trolling messages you've both been sent um Jono, would you be happy to read out we've only chosen three or four i think and sadly you've been sent a lot more but i'll let you take the floor you should kill yourself we don't want your child in the world to be growing up an ugly like you. Kill it before it lays eggs. If you were burning alive, I wouldn't try to save you. His parents didn't want him for a reason. He's not a human being. He should do himself a favour by ending his life. That's really hard hearing that, even here in the studio. It's just, you know, how how does that affect you? when when you get sent messages like that 99 percent of the time I can, i've developed a thick skin and i can i can i'll i'll tell i'll talk to my friends i'll talk to my partner i've seen this and i don't like it and yeah. i can get on with my day yeah or sometimes it don't bother me sometimes i'm like sad little human being why would they send that yeah and then or sometimes i'll think why 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 are they sending this and i'll start and try and work it out and then sometimes it just cuts so deep. Yeah. Mm. I used I used to want to die. I wanted my life to end. And then you're just reading it on online. Yeah. Like, and then some. I've had some horrible thoughts about myself in the past. Um, I was given up for adoption. Um, my birth parents struggled to come to terms with, with my condition. And then when people start talking about my birth parents, I should have been aborted and stuff like that. I used to have those thoughts about myself yeah. and then all of a sudden I'm reading them and then yeah. your loved ones and my mum sees them and my friends see them um, and then it snowballs because then if you're dating and you're like, oh, my partner's going to... Would, why would anybody want to be around any of this? It, it It's just so crazy how one day or in the morning it might not bother you but an hour later it can just mess... Yeah. It can just cut so deep. Yeah. It's... There's, there's no preparation for it you can do all the work you can develop the thickest of skin something it might even be so trivial and silly it can just get it through. still cuts yeah. yeah and we know that sadly a quarter of people who have been bullied have suicidal thoughts you know that's that's how serious the impact of it can be well thank you for sharing Bobby, are you happy to read out yours? Yeah. Deep breath. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies now for the language. Um, Ill, you are a disgrace to humanity. Die, please. Drown in the North Sea. You. If you don't, I'll come to your place and sort you out with my 11-inch blade. You and your sexuality need to be gone ASAP. Just kill yourself. The world would be a better place. Or you. 
Go hang yourself. You're a disgrace. Wish your dad had pulled out. I bet you used to get bullied in school because you're a cat. I think he means but I, I don't know. Or, or maybe cat. Why am I a cat? Um, someone needs to throw acid in your face to make you look better. Hope you get cancer. And do you know the thing? It's, when you read it a, f a few times and you go through them, and it's that kind of thing that... I, as a, as much as a thick skin I do have, so they're so awful. Some of these things, that even the thickest skin, like you're saying, sometimes it just it just goes that bit deep and yeah. uh, affects you some days more than others. But when you do reread it, it's the 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 randomness of it. Like go drown yourself in the North Sea. I mean, I didn't know there was a North Sea. <laughs> like, I, I'm really rubbish oh, at geography and things. But why the North Sea? Yeah. Um, and like I say, I don't know what word he meant, whether he meant cat or not. Um, and an 11-inch blade, it, it's so specific, yeah. but so random. Um, it, it, it's it's the strangest thing to me that anyone thinks that's okay to send to someone yeah. because you just wouldn't dream, you wouldn't dream of thinking it, but yeah. let alone thinking, like, where's my phone? I'm going to send that to him. Um, to put uh, that much effort into yeah, hurting someone it, it's it's it it blows my mind it really does and some of the stuff I've, I've been sent some i mean that's horrendous i've, I've had even worse than that and it, it, it's just i consider myself even though i i do have a thick skin as we say it's it's still you're still human it's it's you still have emotions and sometimes it, it gets to you more than others but i'm very aware that i I can handle it and channel it and I'm in a place in my life where I don't let that consume me and so I don't how... give them the power. But I know 13-year-old Bobby or 14-year-old Bobby would have handled that very differently. Yes. And that's what I'm always very conscious of and that was a massive reason for trying to, to put this bill into place and change the law because some people don't have... don't have the... the the ability to, to deal with it and, and I'm no doctor disclaimer it's going to shock a lot of the the listeners out there and as a as I'm not or a psychologist or anything like that but I think the rise we've seen in the last few years in mental health and the rise of social media I don't think it's a coincidence that them two things have, have rise yeah. together and as we've seen um in the public eye people have taken their own lives because of words online which some people go it's only words it's not only words these things um sometimes it's one message too many yeah. for someone you know and i don't care what anyone's job is I, no one signs up for that no and um even just one message is totally it, unacceptable isn't it completely okay i think we're probably ready for our first letter So this um, is from a, a woman who has a, a birthmark on her face and she was very badly bullied because of it and even though she's had lots of therapy she still suffers with anxiety and depression as a result. Dear Deirdre, I was bullied in my teens for having a large birthmark on my face. I saw a counsellor at school who helped me get over the bullying and I felt better. I moved on to university but I seemed to struggle socially and was anxious most of the time. I thought that therapy might help me again, but the counsellor I contacted recommended antidepressants and told me to read some self-help books. The pills made me very emotional. I felt like I was just a number, not an individual, and I became very anxious. I stopped the sessions because the counsellor was making me feel worse, but I went off the rails and began to self-harm. I'm a 24-year-old woman. I'm better now, but I feel I need closure to stop my inner critic from repeating the horrible words that the bullies from my school years said to hurt me. What should I do? I would recommend finding somebody else to talk to. Yeah. Um, I know you can have a bad experience with anything and that can just put you off doing something for the rest of your life, like a counsellor or speaking to somebody. So you will find a good counsellor. I'm really, really glad and proud of her that she's recognised 
things don't work for her and she's moved away from them. I think that's really, really important. When it comes to me thinking about my bullies, I consider myself very successful. I consider myself... I have to pinch myself at times because, oh my God, I've just got this incredible life. And then I think about the bullies in my life and where they are now. When there's these people with all these dark thoughts it's them that are going to be held back in life, in love, friendships, relationships, work, career. When you have all these dark thoughts, it holds you back. Um, and if you are able to definitely think about, well, this person who just shared this, if she thinks about what she loves about herself and she starts working on that, as Bobby said, pen and paper, write it down. Actually writing something down is very, very powerful. If you start doing that, you'll it'll be very hard at first you might not think about of anything and you might oh i like something but you develop these loves and it just grows and grows and grows um so there are a few of things that I, I initially thought of i really like that tip about the positive affirmations just write it down and as tiny as as the beginning can be it can grow from there but just for her to recognize and to see the good things. Bobby, how about you? What would you advise this lady? Yeah, like John, I said, for me, also when it comes to, to, to the writing down, as well as things you love about yourself, I, I t not every day, because like you say, some days you just don't, and, and life gets in the way, and some days you, you just might be struggling a little bit more, which is more reason to do it. Um, but if there's a, a day like that for me, going back to having my bedside table and the pad and the pen, I try and think of what I'm grateful for. So as well as what you love about yourself, it's because it's so easy to get caught up in your mind and, and get anxious and take on the, the stresses. And the thing about anxiety is sometimes you never know what, you, and most of the time you don't know what you're anxious about. Yeah. And when you speak, say to someone, I've got especially if anyone who's listening has had panic attacks and they've suffered with or they suffer with anxiety if someone doesn't it's very hard for them to get it and they'll go but what are you anxious about because i think in their head whoever you're speaking to is, is trying to help yeah. if someone hasn't suffered with anxiety it's very hard to say i don't actually know it it's it's the feeling it's the sensation um so to get out of your own head and to think well I'm grateful for and it, and it can be the smallest of things it, like it, it doesn't have to be material things it, it can just I'm I'm grateful for that the weather was lovely today or yeah. I, I, I'm I'm grateful that it you just look around in your room but you could be grateful that you've watched your favorite program yes. that night um the simple things the, the simple yeah. things and like, that I'm that grateful if I ever get a cup of tea in bed. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, it's I'm, important. I'm, it's really important. I'm grateful that I, yeah, I had mm. a, I had dinner tonight. I had a lovely coffee this morning. Or yeah. I'm grateful that I've I've got a lovely friend. Um, and also think talking's very very important. So for the for the caller, um, I think speaking to a, a friend or, or someone that it could be a relative, a, a colleague. Um, th there's a lot to be said for getting it, it again and it, all these kind of things I go back to so whether it's writing or speaking it's getting it out of just your own head yes. and vocalising something yes. and that you'd be surprised how much that can help a little bit by just even just saying to one person I, I think your point about talking I mean it, we know everyone always recommends it don't we for anyone who's having mental health issues but if you bottle it up it gets bigger and bigger inside of you as soon as you talk to somebody it's like deflating a balloon yeah you can see people's shoulders go down and you can see that their problem gets smaller once they share and they actually air it so you're absolutely right talking is so so important um and can i just say as well always always know and remember that there are so many amazing souls in this world yeah. and yeah. when you share things with people connections get deeper um, in friendships yes. relationships um, you can have the best cry with somebody and you're just like 
that connection. Like when I talk about people, I've been lucky to travel, and they're like, "Jenna, what's been your favourite place you've ever travelled to?" I think about the people that I've met and the people yeah. that I've spoken yeah. to and connected with, and yeah. it's oh, it, there is there's so many amazing people, and when you embrace it all. People are attracted to that. And yes. when they stick around and there's a friendship or something beautiful born from that, it's pretty special. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, definitely celebrate. And it starts with a conversation. Yes, it does. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll go on to our second letter. Dear Deirdre, my ex is threatening to share our sex tape online if I don't agree to give her full custody of our kids. She's 42, I'm 45, and we were together for 12 years. To be honest, I don't know how I lasted that long. She is quite possibly the most critical person I've ever met. Everything I did was wrong. If I made the bed, the cushions weren't in the right spot. If I cooked dinner, it was too cold, too spicy or too bland. There were some good parts to our relationship. All the arguing meant we had great makeup sex at least two or three times a week. Last year while she was away on a spa weekend with her friends, I decided to tidy the house. I was putting away her clean washing when I found a box shoved at the back of the drawer. Inside was a key and a note that read, so you can visit whenever you want. When I confronted her, she didn't even try to deny it. She said, yep, I've been having an affair for a year, so I guess we better divorce. I was stunned at how little she seemed to care. So we split. She stayed in the house with the kids who I see every weekend, and I moved in with a friend. We managed to keep things pretty amicable until it came to the issue of custody. She wants full custody of our sons, who are 11 and seven. I don't know why, I'm a great dad, and they get really excited to see me every Saturday. Last night she called again to demand I sign the papers. When I said no, she threatened to share a sex tape we had made early on in our relationship. I'd completely forgotten about it. I wasn't totally on board with the idea in the first place, so I think I blocked it out of my memory. I can't believe those words even came out of her mouth. What sort of person threatens that? And she's not considered how this would make our sons feel. Is there anything I can do to stop her? Yeah, it's, it's a heavy letter, that one. Yeah. Um, Bobby, what are your your initial reactions? I mean, like the, the gentleman touches upon at the very end of his letter, ultimately, there's children involved here. Yes. Um, so for, for them, that, that's... I'm actually kind of lost for words, actually, yeah. because it's... Well, you always expect parents to put their children first, first, yeah. But things can get vicious in a breakup, and they forget about the needs of the children. And I mean, I, I'm not a parent, so, it, so it's a very hard one for me to to say. But if if you can, especially when children's involved, it's always nice when any relationship ends. I mean, obviously, you're not got to be best friends, but if you can at least be civil and keep it as amicable as possible, yeah. Especially when you you share children, because you've got to be in each other's lives almost forever. Certainly for for. 21 years but that, that was just gonna be a lot longer isn't it because there's yeah d- down the line there could be weddings and children involved and grand blah 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 um and you, you've all i would say you've always got to put the children first so in terms of the, the sex hope that that's got what good's gonna come of that yes and the the custody side the the, the children is a good dad as he, he says he's a good dad um you, you can't use the children as a weapon uh, and, and threaten the, the, the ex with with that. And if the children want to want to see the dad still... Um... You're absolutely right. We, we know that children benefit from having good relationships with both parents when they are good parents. Mm. And, if, and if they don't have a relationship with one parent, then very often their self-esteem and mental health is affected. So... Yeah. Um, Jono... What are you thinking? And this is a criminal offence, right? The threatening yeah. of sharing a sex tape. So You're right, it's revenge porn. Yeah. So, so even threatening or actually sharing something against someone's will exactly. is a criminal offence. Yes, yeah, so they need to speak to the non-emergency police line and get some advice and s- support because uh, I think that that's an issue. Absolutely. And then I think the other issue is the children and... I think some pair, all of us in this room, and say are open. Will say, you know, put the children first. But there are parents and adults in this world that don't put their children first, and they will use children against one another to try and blackmail and to try and take an advantage of of of, of people. That that does happen. Yeah. 
a lot of kids have experienced broken families and have been manipulated and planted negative seeds against one another. So I think you need to start recording everything, um, creating a logbook of what's being said and, and what's happening, um, day diaries, however you want to put it. And then should anything happen, if his children get any negative thoughts or feelings towards him, he's got a diary then to be able to very trans again be as transparent as possible this is what i've said this is what i've done yeah um maybe create something for his children to be able to read at a later date when they are old enough just in case yeah. this goes sour breakups are hard yeah uh, and throwing children and a marriage in there and an affair and it's that, that's quite a messy thing so mm. yeah. seek legal and police advice and then I'd, I would start recording everything that goes on in your life, thoughts, feelings, actions, and just get a record yeah. of stuff. OK, we'll have a look at our last letter. Dear Deirdre, my son is being bullied at school, but the staff just see it as boys will be boys. He's 11 and in year 7. His mum and I are 38, and we're very worried about him. He's quiet and gentle, very bright, but not good at sports. I think they target him because he's not your typical boy. He's only friends with girls and loves singing and dancing. I suppose you would say he's more feminine. Boys have tripped him up, yanked his rucksack off and taken his packed lunch. Last week they hid his PE kit and laughed when he got into trouble for not having it. A group of boys have taken videos of him being tripped up, doused in fizzy drinks and even of him crying after being shoved around. These videos then get sent around on WhatsApp and shared on TikTok. He's become a punch bag in real life and online. I have spoken to his teachers and they just see him afraid of the bullies, who appear to have a hyena pack type of control in the school. How do I put a stop to this once and for all? Oh, you really feel for Gosh, the yeah. family and the little boy in particular, Awful. don't you? Bobby, what what are you thinking? What would you advise these parents? Like I say, firstly, you just can't help but it's just heartbreaking hearing that, isn't it? It's just absolutely awful. Yeah. Um. It. It's horrendous that, that the parents have spoken to a teacher and that the teacher does they don't feel like they're getting any support from the teacher because that, that's going to be your first point of call um, and, and it's very hard as we, we spoke about earlier coming out and, and saying that you, you, you've, you're you being bullied or you, you've been bullied so the fact he's opened up to his parents and told them I think is amazing yeah. that he, he's told told mum and dad that that's definitely that the first thing and, and so important um kids can be so cruel and i think what you can hear in that letter is that it's clearly escalating as time goes on it's hiding his kit filming him sharing that on social media so he's getting bullied at school I imagine the whatsapps are happening after school then so he's not only living that it's then going on social media as well people are putting it on tiktok for me the parents i i would absolutely go back to the teacher call a meeting with the head teacher and and sit there and, and get the phone out and say these if they've got um like screen grabs of what's being put in yeah. group chats of whatsapp um the videos of, of him being pushed out because that that's not okay you, you go and to school assault. To, it's assault it's isn't assault it? yeah it's... and you're at school to, to learn mm. it's uh, no, no one deserves t to go anywhere daily and put up with abuse um and then have it publicly played out in the domain of tiktok and social media and i would show the teacher the tiktok and, and say that I would demand that that something be done. Um, we don't have to conform into stereotypes of, of what boys should be and what girls should be. Um, and, and I hope he knows that. Yeah. Thank you, Bobby. Mm. And Jono, what would you be saying to these parents and to the boy? So we, as a charity, um, have, have got a few families that are going through this. We, we as a charity, work with the family and as a child. Um, I've gone into schools and done anti-bullying workshops. I've also spent time with the family and worked on that self-love and that acceptance and that embracing who you are and, and listening to um, the boys' thoughts because I think when any child reaches out to an adult, if they get failed by an adult once, they can then live a life of not ever speaking to an adult about some of this things that happens to them and I think that's very very dangerous 
so we need to talk to this boy to continue to share everything that's going on in his yeah. life with those around him um, as Bobby said evidence everything and share that and if the school don't um, act um, I would take it further to the, the, the school governing bodies UMP um, I'd, I'd be tempted to as a desperation thing to reach out to a charity and maybe even social media um, uh, even the, the I don't know the local news I, I, I if that were my son my daughter my child and I'd gone through every avenue and I was still being failed I, w I would bring it to the masses and bring more attention to this because this happens in so many schools that and I don't think it's the teachers faults either I think their hands are tied and they are under a lot of pressure themselves as well um, and there's a lot of reasons why um, there's failings here um, but it doesn't make it acceptable it doesn't make it, it right so it needs to be made aware on on the masses so I yeah think that's what I would be doing thank you I, I love that that you're, you're saying you're saying don't give up so, keep, yeah. keep going don't let them shut the door in your face and um, you'll you'll eventually get there yeah and it's not acceptable and it is, it is tiring and it's a kick in the gut like nobody's listening nobody's listening and that's that's awful um, and and the last resort is that this child have to move school away from yeah. you don't want that that's 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 fair that's uprooting children and friendships and stuff like that but yeah, you need to take it to the next people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, to sign off, I wanted to ask both of you, what would you advise somebody? The top points, what would you advise somebody who is being bullied right now, who hasn't told anyone, who's keeping it all locked up inside them? What would you say? Bobby, first of all. I think that the first thing, and I know we've, we've touched upon it in a, in a couple of conversations today is tell someone talk yeah. to someone you'd be surprised how having a conversation with someone can really help even if it, it's just to die because there's something to be said for hearing yourself back as you speak because yes. when things are false yeah you're aware they're in your head but when you hear yourself saying something you might actually s surprise yourself just vocalizing something because there's a big difference between saying something and just having it in your head so speaking is is key and it's definitely the first thing you should do um also knowing that it it's not your fault like yeah. when you're the victim of bullying it's so easy to kind of go home from school or go home from work because again as we know it isn't just children that suffer at the hands of bullies this can happen in workplaces and does happen in workplaces it happens on social media um so regardless of age it's so easy to, to go home and think it's you and it's a reflection mm. on you or what what have i done or what can i change don't live your life to please other people you know um don't give the bullies that power they already think they've got the power that they're intimidating you they're bullying you um, and bullying comes under a, a vast spectrum of some people might not even know they're being bullied it can be the littlest things um, and it's not until you sit back or maybe speak about it. Sometimes it could be someone at work, for instance. And if you go, you, you you notice things over time. When you speak to a friend or a colleague about that, they might go, "Well, actually, it's, it's kind of adding up now, or it's escalating, and this doesn't seem doesn't seem right." Um, so speaking, knowing it's not you, it, yeah, it, as so I say, it is, is definitely a big thing, and um, it, it's a tricky one because depending on the situation you might not feel confident or comfortable to do it and certainly don't do it if it's going to put yourself in danger or at risk but maybe addressing it with the person who is bullying you telling them how that makes you feel yeah um and it doesn't have to be in a confrontational way it can just be a conversation so do you know what what you're doing and how you're making me feel because as we know it as when things can continue whether it's online abuse trolls and schools work the the, the knock-on effect that can have on someone's mental health is can't can't, can't not be addressed it, it's a, a huge thing and um 
sp- yeah, as I go back to saying, speak, tell someone, yeah. have that conversation. And yeah. if you can't talk to someone who you know, if you haven't got that confidence, there are brilliant charities, I don't know if you know, of Young Minds and The Mix who support young people with mental health difficulties. So, mm. yeah, talking, and if you can't do it to someone you know, phone up one of those charities and they'll help you out with a therapist. Absolutely. And sometimes someone you're not close to, so like you yes. say, Mind is an amazing charity, and I know yeah. there's so many out there, but when it's someone that you don't know, you, you don't feel there's any judgment now. Yes. Um, so, so that's a, a, a great thing to maybe do, to pick up that phone. And these, these charities want to help. You're not being a burden to someone. And don't feel shame either because it, it's it's no reflection on you that this is being done to you. And I think it's f- very common for someone who's being bullied or is the victim of bullying to to be embarrassed and feel shame about it yeah, and you really shouldn't because it's always about the bully it's not about so the person right. it's the bully's inadequacies that make them do it it's like what you said earlier Jono that you felt your mum had got upset because of your face yeah. I know that was younger Jono but that was you feeling that responsibility when it wasn't yours to feel yeah Jono, what would you say to somebody who's going through this right now, listening to us? Um, I think like Bobby hit the nail on the head with a lot. Uh, it's absolutely spot on. But I think in my time of need, when I was getting bullied, I believed every single word that they were saying. And I thought I didn't belong. Yeah. And I think the one thing that I want to say to people is you do belong. You will be loved. You are loved. You will be embraced. You will be celebrated. You'll go on to do amazing things in your life. And these bullies do not control you. I think the only thing that I want to add on to to Bobby's thing is the people around you. Bullying goes on everywhere. And there's people that will just watch it and ignore it. They may even be part of the culture. You need to be better than that. You need to be an upstander. You need to correct people when you when they see something yes. being said that's unacceptable. Yeah. Don't just ignore it. And I absolutely love that. What Bobby said is when somebody says something that's harmful or offensive or they think it's funny in form of bullying, if a by if an upstander call them upstanders, if something why is that? Why do you think that's funny? And then if you make the bully ask answer that question, why do you think some of these comments are funny? Yeah. Them trying to answer that, they're like, oh, you know, they're, they're, yeah. there's no response to, no. to yeah. that. Um, so the upstanders, the people around you, you need to, you need to speak up. It's, yeah. it's ha- when you are in that situation being bullied it's hard it's horrendous you're in fight mode you're yeah. in desperation mode you're just trying to survive and get through the day with as little going on in your life those people around you can be freaking superheroes to these people and you really need to to, to, to stand speak up. up yeah yeah that's yeah just perfectly put so even if you're not being bullied but you are standing by and watching it happen speak out yeah that's not acceptable yeah.